Silica Blast. What is the purpose of adding silica to our fertilizing schedule? Why bother with it? Does it work? What's it supposed to do? There's a lot of different claims out there, and I, for one, like using the product, but I am always skeptical. Here we have a study talking about leaf anatomy of orchids micropropagated with different silicon concentration. The plant showed larger growth with artificial light treatment. That's good. Uh, and the plants without induce chlorochyma and epi okay so basically malformations and leaf tissues you see that they're saying that they had larger shoot length it's great greater seedling growth resulted from the cultivation of the hybrid under artificial light and the cultivation of the native species under artificial light the addition of silicon to the culture medium produced favorable characteristics in the leaf anatomy of the orchid seedling. I for one started using a silicate fertilizer, a silicon fertilizer, one derived from potassium silicate several years ago and I was doing it more for my palm trees, the ones that I leave outside during the winter because there's a lot of information that suggests that it does help increase cold tolerance but only by a few degrees. If you get online and start digging into the research on silicon-based fertilizers. They are applied to lots of different plants, and there's a lot of different results out there. Some saying that it works great, some saying there's really no difference, and even some that indicate that you can use too much, which will inhibit growth and cause problems with your leaf formation. Another study tested the effects of silicon on uh, hybrid Phalaenopsis orchid liners. Reduced growth was observed when 2% silicon was applied, and it looks like the greatest range was at the 1% level. So the conclusion they got here is that hybrid Phalaenopsis orchids are silicon accumulators. This element influences their growth. Further studies are warranted to address the long-term effects. There is a limit with certain orchids, and there's a magic number, and there's probably is not a set variable for how much to use. Silicate, silicon, are naturally occurring substances. Uh, you find them in your dirt, in your orchid bark. It's in uh, um, substrates, in water supplies. It's pretty much everywhere. So there's wide variability as to whether or not you even need to add it because it's quite possibly and likely you already are going to have some silicate within your orchid medium. Particularly uh, lava stone or dolomite, these are known to have a much higher level of silicates in them. So if you're using that, then using a silicate fertilizer probably isn't necessary. Even so, I still use a trace amount, roughly probably half a teaspoon per gallon of water, and I do that about once a week. Some of the benefits that are claimed to go along with using a silicon fertilizer are things such as um, heightening their resistance to wilt, heat, and drought. This is done through improving the strength of the cell walls enhancing plant growth rates with um, because it's supposed to balance out nutrient uptake. I haven't been able to find much in regards to research with orchids to confirm whether or not that's true. Addition of silicon leads to improved fruit and flower production, which makes sense if it's imbalancing nutrient uptake, and that it is supposed to promote natural fungal defense, creating a barrier against penetration of things like black rot and powdery mildew. Which, again, makes sense perfectly if it actually is balancing out nutrient uptake, therefore creating stronger plants and stronger cell walls. And silicon is said to um, increase conductivity. So if it's increasing conductivity, well, then that means that there would be better nutrient uptake. Similar implications have been claimed to calcium and magnesium, which I talked about in a previous video, which I will link to somewhere around here. Personally, I have not run experiments. I don't really have a lab 
upsetting to have a control for such things, but I do not combat fungus often. In fact, I've really only ever had one fungal issue, um, and that was the uh, the Thai black spot disease, which was also in another video. I believe that was Phyllosticta capitensis, maybe? And I received that orchid with the fungus. Basically, I like to combine the silicon fertilizer with the calcium magnesium. I don't mix them together. If you do mix them together, it will actually curdle, and it's really gross, and you have to clean your buckets and sprayers and everything out. But I use the calcium magnesium most days in small amounts, and then I use the silicon one day a week, sometimes twice a week, with the overall objective being to help strengthen the plants, thicken their cell walls, um, and get some deeper greens. Calcium magnesium is supposed to increase their chlorophyll levels, and the, there are claims with that with silicon, but I can't find research to back that up. But there is the research out there, which I'm going to discuss, or already have discussed at this point, that indicates that you do have deeper greens within your leaves and increased plant growth when you add the silicon fertilizer or supplement into your watering schedule. Okay, that's all for now. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you uh, use silicon fertilizers or anything like that and what types of results you may have noticed. Also, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.